So again, I remind you, this whole event we're talking about, this whole temple, and everything that's going on here in chapter 11, 12, and 13, see on the map, I mean the slide in front of you, that's Daniel 9, 24 to 27. God's prophetic word in Daniel is directed at the future of Israel. See, that's where the confusion comes in. It's not the church. All of this has nothing to do with the church. The church is around the throne. This has to do with Israel. Do you see that the tribulation is for Israel? Basically, you could summarize the tribulation this way. It keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse until the Jews are with nowhere to turn. They've all been kind of pushed back into the promised land, back into the holy land, back into basically Jerusalem. The Antichrist, this worst man that ever lives, is hemming them in. He's assembled the biggest army the world's ever seen, what we would call the Battle of Armageddon. They're all gathering at Armageddon. They're going to march together to annihilate the Jewish people in Jerusalem. And it says in Zechariah, as, uh, let me go to the next slide there, Zechariah 12 to 14, what happens is the Jewish people are surrounded. Two thirds of them have died. One third is left. They know there's no hope. And at that critical last moment, they see themselves surrounded, the armies of the world, the Antichrist, that they formerly, when he opened up the temple for the first three and a half years, they were following him, but now he turns on them, hunts them down, and they realize all is lost. And you know what it says in Zechariah 12 through 14? The Lord pours out on them the spirit of grace and mercy. And they go like this. And they look up and they say, only you can save us. And at that moment, Jesus breaks through the clouds with all the armies of heaven behind him, including us. By the way, you're going to go to the Holy Land. Everybody gets to go to the Holy Land on horseback, riding behind Christ at the climactic crescendo, the second coming of Christ. That's what the second coming is. Jesus comes back to rescue the Jewish people because Iran, all the coalition of nations are fighting with the Antichrist, World War III, attacking Jerusalem because Satan wants to destroy Israel. Wow. That's Zechariah 12 through 14. That is God's wrath. And that is what Israel and Armageddon have to do with the future. And so all of that is tying together the scripture. Now, remember, the book of Revelation uh, draws together over 800 allusions, quotations, verses, prophecies from all the rest of the Bible and combines them in what we would say is chronological order. Look at the next slide. Jerusalem in the tribulation period. The tribulation is when all the nations of the earth turn against the Jews. Where's that? Zechariah 14, 3 and 4. It says, then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations. That's the second coming of Christ. That's what we're going to see in Revelation 19. The Lord, Jesus Christ, clothed, uh, riding at the front of the armies of heaven uh, with King of Kings and Lord of Lord written on him in this white garment, comes breaking through the atmosphere, piercing the clouds. And all of a sudden, that army that's surrounded and decimating Jerusalem looks at what the Jewish people are looking at, because the Jewish people all start looking up. And they see their Messiah, and it says they believe on the one whom they pierce. They believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the Lord fights against the nations. Uh, Zechariah 14.3 says, as when he fights in a day of battle. And look at this. And on that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is in front of Jerusalem. And of course, we know what happens. He, he comes down. Uh, by the way, this is uh, where the Mount of Olives is right here. This is the Kidron Valley. This is the Mount of Olives. And Jesus comes down to stand on the Mount of Olives right here. And when he does, it says an earthquake splits the Mount of Olives. And part of it moves to the north and part of it moves to the south. And a river starts flowing out from the Temple Mount 
and goes all the way here to the Dead Sea. All of these things are part of those 800 prophecies. Uh, let me show you a map. This map was in Bloomberg, as in Bloomberg News Service, as in the largest financial news service in the world. This is what they call the Middle East Cold War. Now, this was about three months ago. I clipped that. That's a screenshot. Notice that Russia, Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon, and Yemen are all green. Those are the Iranian sphere of influence. In red is Israel, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, the UAE. Right now, the red are the Sunnis, the green are the Shias. And those two branches of Islam are fighting each other. As you know, Iran sent drones to attack the Saudi oil fields uh, before, a little before Christmas. It was before COVID-19. That was the disaster. It just rocked the world that Iran attacked Saudi Arabia at Christmas of 2019. But that's because God says, listen to this, Ezekiel 38, 3 through 6. See that on the screen? Thus says the Lord, Behold, I'm against you, O God, Prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around, lead you and all your armies, horses and horsemen, splendidly clothed, the great company, all of them handling sword. Now look at the list. Persia. Now, wait a minute. Persia? Yeah. Up until 1947, Iran was called Persia. But then, when they got their independence through the post-World War II dividing up of the countries, they were called Iran. So Iran, Ethiopia, and Libya. Now you say, what are all those? Well, look at the next map. This is the Armageddon Coalition. This is the group that, that are leading World War III with Iran or Persia, going to attack Jerusalem, driven by Satan. Look at that map. Magog, that's the geographic region of South Russia. Gomer and Tagarma is basically Turkey and Syria. Persia is Iran. Libya is Libya and Ethiopia is Ethiopia. And that's the coalition that comes from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west to attack. 